When you're starting a YouTube channel, people always tell you, be sure the content that you're making is fun and interesting. But what about this? What about a long video filled with cold, hard, technical facts? Well, let's just try it and see if we like it. And oh, oh, it might be boring, but you're not gonna get your film sold no matter how good it is unless you know this. So as God is my witness, I'm gonna get you this info. And you know what? We're just gonna do our best to keep it fun because no one should have to live in a country where they are bored. Okay, so let's just be honest. Film distribution is a lot of question marks. Like I think even the film distributors are just making this up. And you wanna get your film seen, but getting it in theaters is almost impossible. So streaming has really opened up a door for indie films to have easier distribution. But hold up, because even if you're bringing a finished product to a platform, there are some sneaky technical requirements that if your film doesn't meet, it's gonna be a non-starter, even if it's the best film they've ever seen. So when I found that out, my first question was, well, what are they? But it turns out it's actually kind of hard to find. So that's why we selected this topic, even though it might be kind of boring because I love you guys and I wanna have fun and hang out with you, but I also want your film to get sold and you need to know this, so buckle up. Today we're gonna to go over Netflix's technical requirements for your film and image capture so that your film has the maximum chance of being sold. Just as a quick side note, these rules are written for Netflix's in-house production teams, but they are also the same standards that they ask for films that they are purchasing from outside production companies. So you should still be adhering to these. Okay, so to start with, what cameras can you use? Oh, that's right. They have specific cameras you can and can't use. So in order to avoid me reading you a big long list of camera names, unless you're into that, I'm just gonna say the brand and we will list on the screen what cameras from those brands are accepted because it's not a blanket statement. They don't just accept all cameras from one brand. They have very specific technical requirements. The other thing to keep in mind here is that these requirements change. They are continually updating. So this is just for 2022, okay? Don't look at this video in like 2026 and get mad at me because your camera's not on the list anymore. This is 2022 only. Ari, surprise, surprise, they love Ari cameras. There's a ton of Ari's out there. If you can afford an Ari, you've got a pretty good shot at this, I'd say. Canon, ooh, a much more limited selection here from Canon. Canon is a beloved brand, but in terms of the technical standards and the technical requirements, there are other cameras out there that can outrun them a little bit. Panasonic, I've actually discovered a lot of shows I really like lately are shot with Panasonic. So these are the cameras from the Panasonic brand that you can use for Netflix. Red camera, oh, surprise, surprise. You can have like your pick of the litter if you're using a red camera. Just truly a rags to riches story. They're happy to accept many red cameras. Panavision, I'm running out of cute things to say about the brands, but here are the Panavisions that you can use. Sony, I feel like Sony is like having a moment. Like they're kind of, I feel like they're a brand people underestimate. And lately I feel like the tone around Sony is kind of changing. So these are the Sonys that you can use. And last but not least, Black Magic, baby. This is a personal favorite of mine. And you know what? You know what is not on this list is the pockets, which is confusing because I actually started this outline with the intention of covering the pockets that you can use if you want to sell your film to Netflix. But that was the 2021 list and I'm not seeing them on the 2022 list. So I'll do some more digging so you don't have to and keep you updated. Yeah, I just think it's important to talk about the pockets because there are a lot of indie filmmakers who go to the pocket as something that's kind of right price point and also really still you can get a great image quality. So I do wanna do a little bit of detective work and figure out how Netflix is feeling about those currently. 
So according to Netflix, your film needs to use one of these approved cameras for at least 90% of your film. Now, I thought this was kind of confusing because you probably shouldn't be like flip-flopping your camera too much for your film, but that being said, there are practical exceptions to this, for example, documentaries or found footage movies, but your mileage may vary. If you're filming shots with GoPros, crash cams, POV footage, or drone footage, you're gonna need explicit permission from Netflix, okay? They need a note from home that says you can do this. And if you're working with them while you're filming, you'll actually need to provide them with test footage to demonstrate the end result and why it's important for you to use this other camera. So you've picked your camera, but how should you set it? Oh, that's right. It ain't just about what camera you use, it's about how you use it. First off, your camera must have a true 4K UHD sensor. This is a big one that's been coming up a lot lately, you guys, but truly 1080p is no longer the professional standard. So just think about this for a second. Every single person who has a smartphone has a 1080p camera. So if you wanna be considered professional, you have to top that. Now, I personally believe you can make a beautiful film in basically any resolution, right? I think you could probably make something gorgeous in 720p. And you know what, frankly, we all probably could benefit a little bit from 720 resolution. But if you wanna talk about a professional standard, professional being the key word there, 1080p ain't it. I feel this huge resistance from filmmakers to let go of that. But honestly, you guys, 4K is the new minimum and you should just go ahead and embrace it because next it's gonna be 6K and then 8K and did you know 12K is already a thing? So we gotta keep it moving, folks. The madness never stops. They will not stop until they can see every pore on every actor. But I'm gonna do a video about that too. You wait, I got a lot to say about that. Okay, so now things are gonna get really technical. Believe it or not, that was the easy part of the video. All right, we're gonna read a lot of numbers here. In terms of your capture format, you're gonna be working with either raw or compressed. So what on earth does that mean? Well, compression is a form of file size reduction because if you're filming in 4K or better yet, even higher, these files are huge, right? They're gonna eat up your whole computer. But in order to prevent any loss of quality, look up lossless compression. And this is basically a form of taking your file, zipping it into a smaller compressed version in a way that you can later unzip it and have the full size image so you prevent any image reduction or loss of quality. A minimum of 16-bit linear or less than 10-bit log processing. You know what, I can't remember this. I can't memorize this. I'm just gonna read it to you off the paper. You know I'm reading it. We're not under any, you know, false illusions here that I've got all this knowledge in my head. Minimum data rate of 240 Mbps at 10 bit UHD 23.98 FPS. Capture transfer function S log three, log C, V log, log three g10 etc I, I love that etc you know enough said capture color space s dash gamut three dot sen red wide gamut rgb or alexa wide gamut etc <laughs> Okay, blah, 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 technical jargon, technical jargon, but no film's color should be baked into the raw footage, okay? Okay. Files must maintain all metadata. Oh my God, are they gonna check? And yeah, I mean, this is a lot. This is a lot to remember. So, you know, films don't look pretty on their own, baby. Okay, we did it. I mean, that was the hardest section. So this next part is a breeze. Now, Netflix has a few other requirements to take into consideration. Firstly, they highly recommend frequent black balancing. Now, I know a lot of us DPs are very used to white balance, white balance, white balance, white balance. Black balancing is what it sounds like. It's the opposite of white balancing. Just as the white balance gives the camera a frame of reference for true white, black balancing calibrates for no light. And by calibrating for both of these, you will improve your image quality 
far greater than just adjusting for the white balance. Your color management matters. And we are gonna talk so much about color on this channel because I love color theory, but truly, truly, before you can get it pretty, you have to get it right. Also, you will need to consider your use of anamorphic lenses. What? So apparently you need to get permission if you wanna use an anamorphic lens, which I have decided to take really personally because my anamorphic lenses are my babies. So we're not gonna talk about how anamorphic lenses could impact the quality of your image. And we're just gonna say Netflix is picking on them for literally no reason, okay? And you want to avoid using spanned clips. If you're unfamiliar, these are single takes spread across multiple camera cards. I know that a lot of us film nerds have our own very strong opinions about film versus digital, but if you wanna film with film, you will again need to get permission from Netflix. Sorry. So yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot to remember. But if you pay attention to these details before you start your project, you will not only end up with something that looks beautiful, but is of a professional quality that you could find streaming on any platform out there. So thanks so much for watching you guys. I appreciate it and I hope you had a good time. Is that reaching for this video? I hope you learned something. Be sure to like and subscribe because we're trying to make a lot of content here and you know what? We need you. Frankly, we need you. And yeah, that's it for me. So this is Raven signing off.